Well, there are plenty of warnings about the dangers of smoking. Cigarette packages graphically illustrate the effects of smoking on the human body. In all, smokers inhale about 7,000 chemicals. Now, among them is a radioactive compound found in tobacco. Yet, it seems few people who choose to smoke are aware that they're at risk of radioactive poisoning. Our resident science guru, Dr Karl Krasinski, explains. Dr Karl, in news just in, cigarettes are bad for you. It's funny that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> just how bad for you? Um, they're the only product that if used according to the manufacturer's directions will inevitably cause harm in every case of people who use them according to the manufacturer's directions. But we're not alcohol. just talking about lung cancer by the actual uh, smoke itself. There's, there's a more insidious element in the tobacco. Well, in terms of element, there's a radio... Cigarettes are radioactive. If you get this little tube, put it to your mouth and suck on it, you smoke one packet of cigarettes a day, it dumps into your lungs enough radioactive material to give you the equivalent of half a chest X-ray per packet of cigarettes. Or one packet of cigarettes for a day, over a year you've had 200 chest X-rays. You go to anybody and say, hey, we'll give you a chest X-ray every two days. Wouldn't that be dangerous? Yes. Yeah, so you figure that smokers, if they were told that, probably would refrain from smoking if they... Mm. The, the chances of death from the radiation compared with just uh, lung cancer developed by Well, by no, smoke. not necessarily. You see, the thing is, it's a beautifully... It's a wonderful product because you get this cylinder, you shove it in your mouth, you light it, and within 10 to 20 seconds, you've got the addictive drug landing on your brain and there's no other drug delivery device that is as good as a cigarette for that purpose. With alcohol, there's a time delay of 15, 20 minutes. Here you've got that instant feedback and you've also got a substance which is highly addictive. Now, were you ever a smoker or were you too smart? You were too no, smart. I was too smart. Yeah. yeah, okay, I wasn't. And so I was a smoker for a couple of years and I was able to give up easily. In my case, when I smoked nicotine, the nicotine did not create extra nicotine receptors in my brain. But in one third of people, I was in the lucky two thirds, in one third of people, they start smoking cigarettes, they create extra nicotine receptors which have to be fed and they are addicted. And it's just purely the luck of the draw whether you get addicted, really addicted or not. It is not that you've got weak moral fiber. It's the addiction. Now, cigarettes have killed in the 20th century, 100 million people. And in the 21st century, they're looking to kill a thousand million people, otherwise known as a billion. And with the whole radioactive thing, the radioactive polonium, it kills about 2% of all the people who die from smoking. With regard to smoking, half the people who, who smoke cigarettes will die of a smoking-related cause. Half will die of something else, but half will die of a smoking-related cause. But is that, when you say, because of the intake of polonium, that, that, uh, that polonium comes from the okay, you've got, herbicide? No, the... you've got a rock called apatite, A-P-A-T-I-T-E. -E. That gets ground up and made into a fertiliser. It contains uranium. It decays into polonium, which makes its way into the tobacco plant, either into the roots or into the leaves. You then smoke the cigarette and it has some radioactive polonium in it. The cigarette is at a temperature of 600 to 800 degrees C, which is hot enough to melt the polonium. So it turns into a gas and goes deep into your lungs and it lands on your lungs and it is 250 million times more toxic than cyanide. It lands on the soft, squishy tissue inside your lungs, gives off alpha particles and kills 2% of all the people who die from smoking as a cause of death. But you're saying that only becomes active uh, at that temperature. So we shouldn't be concerned, for instance, from the food we eat, which would contain polonium? Uh, we, we, luckily, it lands on your gut and the cells in your gut are washed off every two days. So that it's continually coming in, continually washing out, whereas in your lungs, it's sitting on just one little junction point and it's just sitting there for weeks and years, continually spraying those cells with alpha particles and continually damaging them. Whereas in your gut, it's damaging here, it's damaging there, and then they're washed out after five days. So, so that is much more toxic than background radiation, which we live with every day. Yes. And the thing was, the tobacco companies, Big Tobacco, knew about this. Number one, they knew about this in, 19, in the 1970s. Number two, they worked out ways to reduce the polonium. And number three, knowing that it was there and toxic and knowing that they had a way to get rid of it, 
they did nothing. It's just like a car company knowing that the brakes will fail after 25,000 kilometres, but we're not going to tell you, and if you die, it's your own fault. Wouldn't you think that having a radioactive product symbol on the carton of a cigarette packet might dissuade some people from actually smoking? It might, but the trouble is it's a truly addictive drug. And I was lucky. I could give up because I was in the two-thirds of people who don't make the extra nicotine receptors. When you're addicted, you are truly, deeply, fundamentally addicted. It is more addictive than heroin. It's a nasty drug. And any way to overcome that other than education campaigns or even banning smoking completely? I'd go for the banning. The trouble is that the government of today receives the financial benefit from the taxes and the government of 20 years has to pay for the hospital costs. And so every government says, oh, we can't afford to ban them. It'd be wrong. And it'd be against moral integrity or moral rights or advertising or create. They, they make up some sort of reason. It comes back to the dollars. Just quickly, if, if a patient comes to you and says, uh, Doc, I smoke, what do you say to them? Um, I admit that it's addictive. And then we see if they want to give up. If they don't want to give up, there's no point. If they want to, it's hard and you have to work at it. And some people can never successfully give up. It's really hard. It's a really addictive drug. Dr. Carl, thanks very much.